welcome everyone uh, from uh, this program that we call People to Biden. Um, most of us do know that uh, the US President Joe Biden has taken the decision um, to return to the Paris Agreement. So prodigal son returns um, and it's an important step for the world. So he has now called uh, for a conference, which they call the Leaders' Summit on Climate, on the 22nd and 23rd of April, coming up shortly, and has invited 40 global leaders to the table, even though it's a virtual table. Um, the Prime Ministers of Bangladesh, Bhutan, and India um, have been invited. So South Asia is represented by these three leaders. And that is why we thought, um, and we have been considering for the last two weeks, should we say something to Biden and to our own leadership that is going to be represented in the Leaders' Summit? Or is it just useless? And they're going to do their talk and go home. Um, but then we thought it's important for people's voices, voices from the ground. And therefore, we have civil society leadership in uh, countries across South Asia that we are coming together to sort of reach out to this process that we must sort of look forward to. Um, it's like uh, the bully in the class. If nobody really wants to talk to him. But now if the bully sort of shows some, um, you know, um, uh, is trying to repair his image and do the right things, then we thought that we must sort of reach out and place our demands straight from the people, not filtered through our governments. But, um, uh, but we also have a very important people's representative with us as chief guest today. I welcome all of you to the People to Biden conference, which is uh, co-hosted by the Bangladesh Working Group on External Debt that we all know as BWGED, the Center for Environmental Justice, CEJ in Sri Lanka, Diggo Bigas Institute, DBI in Nepal, Growth Watch India, Mines, Minerals and People, MN and P um, India, Pakistan Kisan Rabita Committee, PKRC, Participatory Research Action Network, PRAN, and um, the regional network that we call NGO Forum on ADB. Um, we shall go quickly uh, through a welcome uh, by somebody who's worked on putting this together, who's um, the man behind it all, and then we will go through voices representing Sri Lanka, Pakistan, uh, India, Bangladesh, and then Nepal. Um, and of course, a regional voice from the Philippines um, as a speaker. We will end with um, Saber Hussein Chaudhry, Chair of the Parliamentary Standing Committee of the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change in Bangladesh, um, saying what he thinks. Um, your mics are all muted, your videos may be off. If you need to say something, do raise your hand or type an asterisk in the chat box. The chat box, of course, is open for everyone to read. So please go ahead and say what you want to say and also introduce yourself in the chat box. Um, I now call upon Hassan Mehdi, Member Secretary, Bangladesh Working Group on External Debt and uh, Chief Executive of CLEAM, Bangladesh, res residing near the Sundarbans in Khulna. Mehdi. Uh, thank you very much, Vidya. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, uh, Center for Environmental Justice, Digo Bikash, Grotwas, Minds, Minerals, and People, NGO Forum and DB, uh, Pakistan Kisan Rabita Committee, and Participatory Action Research Network, uh, uh, Pran. Uh, thank you all of you to come forward and uh, in a joint meeting, joint conference, where we can raise our voice from the ground uh, to the uh, Biden Summit, which is, which is called Leader Summit on Climate Now. Uh, you know the United States is the second largest greenhouse gas emitting country in the world, while uh, they are the fourth largest per capita emitter among the Annex One countries. It's also historically the largest or highest emitting country. As the US policymakers role is crucial to ensure the greener earth, most of the important international climate related instruments 
have been taken with their consent. But historically, uh, it, it escaped from due responsibilities, uh, not by, uh, by not signing of the Kyoto Protocol only, but also withdrew itself from Paris Agreement. Uh, after winning the election in 2020, uh, the US President Joe Biden took the decision to return to the, United, uh, to the Paris Agreement on the first day uh, in his office. Uh, consequently, he called uh, for a conference called Leaders Summit on Climate on 22nd and 23rd April 2021 and invited 40 global leaders to join the summit. Uh, and uh, of course, Bidya told you already that Bangladesh, Bhutan, and Indian uh, prime ministers, honorable prime ministers, are uh, invited there to join. We, uh, we uh, pay thanks to the uh, uh, President of the United States. And I want to inform you that there are six major goals, uh, six, six thematic areas of the, um, of the uh, Biden conference. Uh, one is uh, galvanizing efforts by the world's major economies to reduce emissions during the critical decade of to keep a limit to warming of 1.5 degrees Celsius within reach. Second, mobilizing public and private sector in finance uh, to drive the net zero transition and to help vulnerable countries to cope with the uh, climate impacts. Third, the economic benefits of climate action with a strong emphasis on job creation and the importance of ensuring all communities and workers benefit from the transition of new clean energy economy. Four, sparring transformational technologies that can help reduce emissions and adapt to climate change while also creating enormous new economic opportunities and building the industries of the future. Five, showcasing subnational and non-state actors that are committed to green recovery and an equitable vision for limiting warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius and are working closely with the national governments to advance ambitious ambition and uh, resilience. And six, discussing opportunities to strengthen capacity to protect lives and livelihoods from the impacts of climate change, address the global security challenges posed by the climate change and impact on readiness and address the role of nature-based solutions in achieving net zero by 2050 goals. So keeping those in mind, our objective is that the people's demand for reparation ambitious cuts of territorial and global emission and divestment from fossil fuel is considered by the leaders of the summit on climate called by the US uh, President Joe Biden. And with this call, our honorable uh, member of parliament and parliamentary uh, chair of parliamentary standing committee and also the president of the inter-parliamentary union, uh, Saber Bhai or Saber San Choudhury, he agreed to join with us as a safe guest. We're grateful to you. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, and uh, thanks once again from Bangladesh and also the civil society of South Asia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mehdi, so much. Uh, you've laid the ground beautifully. And now let's jump straight away into actions because really uh, action right now is imperative. It is an, a situation of emergency and we need uh, action. For the state of demands, I call upon first from Sri Lanka, Himanta Vithanage, Executive Director of the Center for Environmental Justice and Convener of the NGO Forum on ADB. Himanta. Himanta has to unmute himself. Yes, yes, Himanta. Thanks, Vidya, Dinkar, um, and also uh, Mehdi Hassan, and all of you joining this uh, very important webinar. First, I want to thank uh, President Biden for uh, returning the climate, um, Paris Climate Agreement, and also organizing the, uh, the Leaders Summit on uh, Climate, which is very important uh, moment um, at this time. Um, South Asia is one of the most vulnerable region uh, for climate change. Um, about 1.82 billion people suffer from climate uh, crisis. 
Uh, Sri Lanka per capita carbon emission is very, very low. Uh, it is about 1.2 metric tons. But according to the UN uh, development report, the Sri Lanka's planetary pressure is very, very low. It's within the first 35 uh, countries in, in, the, in the world. So which means that we are emitting very little carbon um, to the uh, atmosphere. Uh, but however, the global climate index, uh, in, uh, according to 2017 uh, data, we are number two affected all over the world. And in, in 2018 data, we, uh, Sri Lanka is number six um, within, within the most affected countries uh, due to climate change. So the developed countries, including United States, are mainly responsible for climate disasters. So our best estimate is of the 1.5 degree remaining carbon budget is 440 billion tons of carbon dioxide from 2020 onward. So if human activities around the globe continue to produce carbon dioxide at the current rates, we will deplete the remaining carbon budget in a little more than 10 years. So therefore, all the developed countries have to come to zero emission by 2030 and all of other countries have to completely reduce their emission uh, by 2050. So United States has no much space for emitting carbon. Historically, United States acted in support of the big emitters. And we know uh, so they always support the oil corporations, coal uh, miners, coal industry, gas producers. And always you supported the solutions including carbon trading which are which are which we believe for solutions so we have no much time and therefore we demand president biden and the rest of the developed developed country leaders to take the historical responsibility of climate crisis and immediately bring real solutions to tackle the climate change you should also support the climate affected countries the vulnerable communities and and becoming communities convert into climate refugees and you have to support rebuilding their life and also the, you have to support them to live in dignity so thank you so much for this opportunity thank you Hemanta. that was very clear there are uh, common uh, but differentiated goals you've put forth very clearly and the responsibility uh, lies with northern countries especially the u.s for what is happening in our countries. Um, from Pakistan, Farooq Tariq, General Secretary, Pakistan Kisan Rabita Committee, and uh, the International Committee member of the Asia Europe People's Forum. Farooq Tariq. Yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, I must uh, appreciate this initiative, this timely initiative that has taken place just prior to this important summit. And also, I want to uh, add that Pakistan has been invited yesterday to this summit. Earlier, it was not invited. Now, yesterday, uh, there was a letter sent to Pakistani government, and Pakistani government has accepted to be part of the summit. So that's a good news, because when Pakistan was not invited, there was a lot of propaganda in the media about that Pakistan is doing this much, this much, why Pakistan is not invited. And opposition was also sort of criticizing the present government that you are talking too many things about climate change and now you are not invited. But now they are invited because Imran Khan sent a tweet at the time. He said, I'm puzzled why I'm not being invited. Because, uh, and he was right in that, because according to Global Climate Risk Index, Pakistan is uh, uh, the fifth most vulner vulnerable country to the climate change. And, uh, and this uh, important summit where over 40 countries are present, where China, Russia, and all others are there, and most of South Asia is there, it was important to have, be, to, to have this more inclusive. Now, I would uh, say that uh, it was a very grave mistake of Trump to leave Paris uh, agreement. And we all criticized him. And this was a reactionary uh, 
president of america who who treated climate change as he treated corona uh, because he did not accept there is a climate change so uh, and they said no no we don't need to be part of the world effort uh, uh, to uh, to lower the temperature and all that but but finally american people are congratulated to get rid of trump and to bring a president who rejoined uh, paris agreement because this was an important uh, agreement and uh, us and other countries had promised that they will at they will spend at least 100 billion dollars per year as uh, uh, reprimand to historic liabilities uh, they have to pay the historic liabilities uh, as they are, they are the responsible industrial, they are the industrialized responsible countries who have made this mess in the world environment and they have to pay the price. They can't just leave us alone to let be at the mercy of the climate change and our people should die and they should sit in a different more cozy atmospheres so it was uh, uh, it was good that biden has joined and i hope that this summit on 22nd and 23rd of april which is one of the most important even taking place just after biden's administration took over uh, will take some steps to implement the remaining parts of the paris agreement what we say that uh, US must not allow its financial institutions, both private and state owned, to finance the fossil fuel uh, projects. They should not give any money. Almost fifth of the equipment which uh, is been used by the fossil fuel projects are, are produced in US they should immediately stop producing the material that help to make the world more dirty what it was earlier and we also say that they should the these uh, us is among the fourth largest lenders to fossil fuel industry so i mean us should take the responsibility that they are the one who have who have made our life worse than it was earlier. And Bangladesh among the South Asian country is the worst, worst affected. And we have all uh, happy to see the parliamentarian leader here in this meeting. And from Pakistan, uh, we gave our greetings to them. And we say that this is the right step for the parliamentarians to participate in the civil society initiatives and to see what civil society has to say and bring the message forward to the government and ultimate to the summit. Thank you very much. Thank you, Farooq Bhai, um, of reminding the US of its historic responsibility of a carbon intensive fossil fuel system, uh, but also of, um, uh, you know, uh, a sort of one second, I'm trying to remove the pin, yes. Um, and also to remind us that uh, nothing much has changed, that they are still someone who accelerates uh, the fossil fuel industry in so many ways. Uh, I now call upon someone from India, someone who is sort of like a champion of the commons, Demi Oram is from Orissa in India and is the executive committee member of Mines, Minerals and People. Demi. Demi, you have to unmute yourself, huh? Perfect. Yes, Demi. Yeah. So uh, good afternoon, everybody. And <laughs> thanks to Vidya uh, for giving opportunity to speak uh, regarding this community of our Indian people and uh, the coastal uh, fisher folks those who are uh, two groups are the mo most affected on this climate change in indian perspective i would like to say again that uh, 
the figure is very worried because due to pollution million of lives are uh, losing per year as per the reports and uh, now in ground what i found in my area is that because of this climate change and environment impacts that uh, this uh, crops yielding are reduced forest uh, produce are being totally reduced and damaged then this water is contaminated so nothing left behind with this climate change again its impact the hottest earth and because of this again our yielding capacity of forest forest produce are reduced so directly its impact to indigenous people and not only for indigenous people in coastal area also the aqua life has been almost 30 to 40 percent in my observations physical observations i had found that are with vanished and uh, no more are existence in coastal area where common people are accessing uh, the uh, aqua life uh, in their day to day life and uh, i am really thankful to this forum that uh, at least this american government has been initiated to join in paris agreement and uh, they also prefer to go ahead how to get rid of these uh, issues two parts what uh, tarik has uh, said right now that all investment in fossil fuels should be stopped from us and i uh, also further extend not only from us but whatever uh, investment across globe done by americans they should also think over these things and with respect to that also again i will uh, say from ground that this is time for not to go for profit but to go for humanity because really humanity is in danger till the government have some few supports to uh, rural people particularly indigenous community for survival but this is not sufficient if they have to live in dignity and in sustainable manner then the higher uh, uh, polluted making or the climate change groups they should think how uh, they will create this world healthy and better way for living not only living beings but the human beings is in totally danger maybe some species they will survive but i don't think we the human persons particularly those who are economically backward uh, they will finish finished in very short way uh, so something wrong with uh, okay uh, so my request to this uh, forthcoming programs on 22nd 23rd for all leaders that at least they should stop the investing in this fossil fuel projects and they may shift it to uh, some uh, other uh, energy sources so that uh, energy and the people's requirements may balance and the environment may be kept protected uh, i'm sorry yeah. many times <laughs> i am getting disturbed Uh, uh so again i am uh, requesting to all these leaders to uh, go for this uh, summit but nothing less will be accepted if they are not withdrawing their projects in fossil fuels and uh, their profit making ratio should be shifted to humanity from demi thank thank you demi that was straight from the heart and thank you for that it's um, very important that uh, 
you know, that voice from the ground comes out. And uh, thank you for that uh, emotional appeal. We hope that the leaders who are sitting together on the 22nd and 23rd keep, as you said, humanity and um, uh, the people's requirements firmly in the center, not profits and corporations. Um, I now call upon uh, a prominent voice from Bangladesh, uh, Nurul Alam Masood. Chief Executive of PRAN, Participatory Research and Action Network, also General Secretary, Food Security Network, Khani. Masood? Uh, hello, Bidya. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much. Uh, the chair of today's uh, webinar conference, uh, distinguished uh, guest, our favorite, Saber Hussain Chiyodhuri, uh, Chair of Parliamentary Standing Committee on Ministry of Environment or external climate change, our co-host uh, friends from Pakistan and others country. Uh, welcome and greetings from the, from the people affected by the climate. Uh, I have a few recommendations actually. First of all, it's uh, good to see burden administration has become, uh, has uh, been taken to host the world leaders uh, summit on climate in this week. After four years of uh, US inception, Biden hoped that US once again ready to be leader again in combating climate change. But <clears throat> I feel there is a chance to establish US supremacy again and again in climate negotiation. So we have to be careful about it. Uh, recently, you know, uh, US president and boy on climate change and one of the architect of Paris Climate Accord, Mr. John Kerry visited Bangladesh and he invited our prime minister to join this summit. All of you know, Bangladesh is one of the most climate vulnerable country by uh, climate change. Uh, being a most climate affected country, as well as the lead of climate vulnerable forum, Biden summit should be used as a new discussion opportunity for Bangladesh. I hope our prime minister will be able to use this opportunity. But uh, I feel Scary's visit shows that Bangladesh is specifically important for this conference. We need to seize this opportunity for Bangladesh, South Asia, and the members country of Climate Vulnerable Forum. But at the same time, we need to be alive. US should not try to get any unfair benefit in this geopolitical field of this region, given Bangladesh the advantage or more importance. They have to be more climate sensitive and it has to be announced that before any intervention, environment, ecology, climate should be the first kind of considerable factor for this region. And finally, I would like to raise some recommendation to this conference towards the Biden summit, actually. First of all, uh, the United States, along with NX1 countries, and never made their pledge of providing 100 billion annually for adaptation and mitigation. We demand to the Biden administration, administration to fulfill their promises. Four of the 10 banks in the world who are investing in fossil fuel are US company. So the US financial institution, both state owned and private, must stop financing for fossil fuel. Since the US is one of the faster going RE market. We urge to supply equity technology finance for a renewable in opportunity to build a greener Bangladesh. Our prime minister, she will take part in this conference. I hope she will present Muzib climate prosperity plan in this conference. I believe this policy will encourage other countries to formulate political rules and policies as well as the state policy. We are already becoming, we, Bangladesh is already becoming 
uh, role model for the many other countries in terms of climate adaptation. I hope the country like Bangladesh will also play a role in climate mitigation. In particular, we hope to hear about some future plan to bring green technology and move away from high carbon emission industries, industries from our prime minister's voice in this conference to make the world more greener, just and level for all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Masood Bhai. Um, it was great that you addressed not just your prime minister and of course from the most climate vulnerable country uh, but also uh, the world stage as to their responsibility in this present condition because south asia itself is uh, one of the most climate vulnerable regions um, coming from uh, bangladesh is a very different kind of parliamentarian who is our chief guest for this conference. Um, he's the chair of the Parliamentary Standing Committee uh, to the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. He's also the honorary president of the Inter-Parliamentary Union, which is a global platform for parliamentarians from 179 countries across the world. Sabar Hussain Chaudhary, it's always a pleasure to have you join us. Uh, I think, I think before, uh, before, uh, before, uh, before that, I think uh, we, can, we can give a chance to Nepal also. Oh my God, did I just uh, <laughs> miss Abhishek? See, Abhishek, uh, so Sabar Hussain Chaudhary, it is my mistake. Can we ask our young climate Absolutely. activist from Nepal to um, first speak? Look, look at us. Uh, I'm so sorry, Abhishek. Um, here you have Drishti also from Nepal joining us just when you are going to speak. Uh, Abhishek Shreshta is from Digo Bikas uh, Institute in Nepal. Uh, it's a young group, all fired and very, very concerned about climate change. Abhishek. Uh, thank you, Vidyadi, and thank you, everyone. Uh, first of all, I'd like to again uh, thank Mendi Vai, uh, Vidyadi, and Hemanta for their. Uh, leadership in organizing uh, people to uh, Biden conference ahead of uh, leader summit to bring forward the people's voice from South Asia. As we have already uh, shared, like South Asia is one of the most uh, vulnerable uh, region in the world. And it's very timely that uh, the Biden and the global leaders who are attending this conference need to hear from us and and the voices that all of us bring uh, is from the people's voice. So it's very important that uh, this platform has <clears throat> provided that opportunity to voice uh, that message. And along with that, I also would like to congratulate the United States uh, because they are now back into uh, Paris Climate Agreement and also uh, Biden's uh, administration for organizing uh, this uh, conference. In context of Nepal, if you see that uh, it's passing year, we have uh, increased number of uh, like uh, intensity of flood, uh, like uh, drought, landslide, uh, forest fire, decrease in agriculture productivity. Lots of people are forced to be displaced uh, from here. And like larger population is uh, in Nepal is being impacted because of this uh, climate crisis, the crisis of our generation and among that, uh, indigenous people, women are like, again, like uh, mostly impacted. So Nepal, along with that, Nepal is one of the fourth most uh, vulnerable uh, country in the world. And then along with that, Nepal is losing like every year, like 2% of uh, their uh, GDP uh, annually. So uh, for a country with like low income, like losing one, one to like 2% of their annual G GDP because of, because of climate crisis is a huge loss. And there's an estimated that by the end of this century, Nepal will be losing its like 13% of uh, its GDP because of the crisis of our generation. That's very uh, sad uh, for a country like uh, Nepal, who does not have any part to play for this uh, crisis, but one of the country that will be suffering uh, most. And along with that, uh, like though Nepal has not been uh, invited uh, to uh, this uh, leader summit in climate change, but Nepal uh, has been uh, leading uh, different efforts and initiatives so that the community uh, are more resilient of uh, climate crisis. Along with that, a government of Nepal has 
uh, started a, a conference called Sagar Matha Sambad. Uh, that's an international uh, head of states uh, meeting to find out the way how they can uh, tackle uh, climate change uh, through their uh, cooperation. So there, can, there we can see uh, such kind of uh, initiative uh, from uh, uh, the country like Nepal. Uh, though uh, many countries like Nepal, who are much more vulnerable to climate crisis, has not been has not been invited. But uh, Biden's administration has to make an effort to hear from the countries that are much much more uh, vulnerable, like in um, like through uh, different uh, platforms, so that uh, they can uh, find out the way how they can uh, solve this uh, climate crisis as a real leader and. And we, and we are also looking this an opportunity uh, for US to stand out as a global leader that world is looking forward to address the climate crisis, not just another uh, mere gathering where they are calling for 4045 uh, head of states and having that conversation. So this needs to be a transformative uh, conference where US needs to uh, step up and show their uh, leadership that uh, world uh, needs on. So we do have uh, a few demands uh, as well, like other uh, uh, friends from uh, different parts of South Asia has uh, already put forward uh, their demand. So we urge, uh, especially US government uh, to fulfill their uh, fair share on climate action because uh, they are far behind uh, their uh, fair share on climate action. So we demand them to uh, do, do their uh, fair share and that should be uh, done in line of achieving uh, the real zero target uh, by 2050. In, in addition to that, uh, we, we also uh, like urge them uh, for climate finance and, that the, and the finance that we are uh, calling upon is not a uh, grant or like a donation. It needs to be uh, as a part of uh, ecological debt and it has to be in the form of uh, a reparation for the countries in South and uh, like most vulnerable region uh, South Asia. Uh, in addition, uh, like if you see, uh, like uh, the NDC submitted by many countries and US is leading us to the temperature around like three to four degrees C or like much more higher uh, by the end of this century. So again, we like to call upon uh, US uh, to take uh, a major uh, leadership and then fully decarbonize the world by 20, 30 degrees so that we'll uh, have uh, the science-based target of 1.5 degrees C uh, by the end of uh, this century. So uh, that's our urge and demand and hope this uh, gathering uh, would be a transformational one and they would hear the people's voice from the ground. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Abhishek Shreshta from the Gobikas in Nepal. Um, I think um, that is also an important demand from many countries that the US, um, well, uh, put your money where your mouth was. That's what they haven't done until now. For example, for the Green Climate Fund, they haven't paid up what they promised. Uh, I think it was a hundred billion uh, dollars each year. But uh, let's now come to our uh, chief guest and I'm calling him early before some others from the region put in their thoughts uh, because he is a busy man and he has to go uh, and be part of another important meeting. Uh, Honorable MP Sabir Hussain Chaudhary, the floor is yours. You speak on behalf of not just your country, but um, South Asia and its aspirations from the leaders' uh, summit on climate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vidya. And uh, a very good afternoon to everyone. We don't have to think about good morning because we're all from the same region. I know in this uh, virtual world, you know, we speak across uh, time zones and time differences. Uh, let me first... Uh, say that it's always a very uh, a very humbling, uh, very reassuring, uh, refreshing, and also a very informative um, phase to be listening to the people that we represent. Uh, because ultimately, as you said, you know, the voice from the bottom, uh, not in terms of importance, uh, but probably in terms of not having the voices heard often, should really be heard. And, uh, and leaders are only leaders as long as they listen to the people that they represent. Uh, so I think it's, it's very important that what you are doing to try and dovetail this event with what is going to happen on the 22nd and 23rd is very important. And I thank everyone for, for the views that they've expressed 
I, I know there are a number of uh, organizers, uh, you know, Mehdi reached out to me and he's someone who's always very active, but I know this is not just a Bangladesh event, it's uh, other countries are involved and there's also a regional overview uh, of this whole uh, initiative today. Let me try and, and put in perhaps a slightly uh, different perspective to what seems to be the general impression uh, that uh, this is really America uh, for American opportunity to reestablish its uh, global position. Of course, there is that, because if you uh, recall what uh, President Biden mentioned after being elected, he said America is back. And I think America coming back in terms of leadership, in terms of taking action is various things is of course very important. Um, it is important not just for America and how we view America, but it is actually important for the whole world. Uh, if you look at the challenges that face uh, us today, whether they be climate change, whether they be you need to have a global response because these are global issues. So the whole idea of countries coming together, the whole idea of multilateral cooperation, which was actually thrown out of the window by the former president, I don't want to name any individuals, but I think we all know, that needs to come back. And so uh, what we are going to be seeing over the next two days is not really, uh, it's not going to fix the climate problem but it is really going to test as to how, uh, how sincere, I use that term very deliberately, all the countries are in working together. Just as we are trying to work together in South Asia, uh, the other countries of the world must also come together because otherwise, how are we going to solve these global issues? Whether it is food insecurity, whether it is water stress, whether it is growing inequality, whether it is loss of biodiversity, you really need that collaboration. So I think it's an acid test from that point of view. So it is, I see the summit as being important in what sort of messages it is going to send. What are going to be the optics? Is there going to be hope and encouragement for the people that we are really talking about today? So I think that's, that's something very fundamentally important. The other thing why I'm a little bit more hopeful, and I'm not saying that I'm absolutely convinced it will happen, is because if you look at Biden's election campaign and what he talked about before the election, yes, he talked about climate. Yes, he talked about America been back. Yes, he talked about moral leadership. But I think for the first time, maybe we see a major global power, economic power, making the connection between environment and the economy, that you cannot sustain the economy without taking care of the environment. And I think that basic understanding seems to have now crept into American politics, or at least with the Biden administration. So what he is actually thinking of doing, yes, because we have been talking about we are. We talk about displacement. We talk about rising sea levels. We talk about food uh, insecurity. We talk about drought. We talk about floods. We talk about glacial melt in the Himalayas. Uh, we have Abhishek from Nepal here. None of this had ever had any traction, but now it is having traction, why? Because this is actually aligning with the economic interest of America as America sees it. I think that is something very, very important. So, and of course, multilateralism is not really a question of charity. Multilateralism is when our interests, our aspirations align, combine, come together. So yes, if by investing in clean technology, America sees a way out for itself, out of the economic quagmire that it finds itself in. It's going to generate jobs. It is going to stimulate their economy. If we as South Asia and other countries can benefit from that process, that I think is where the real opportunities are. It has to be a win-win. We cannot claim uh, to be the victims and ask for you know, reparations and compensation, which of course we are absolutely entitled to because this is something of climate justice, this is something of equity. We have been at the receiving end, but let us be realistic. What is important is to get those funds. What is important is to get access to the innovation and the new technologies that they have. I think that is fundamentally very important. So when our Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who has done a great job you know, in terms of advocating for uh, the Climate Vulnerable Forum, when she speaks, of course, I expect her to be very forceful on 1.5. Because even at 1.5, there is going to be a lot of subject, 
you know, there'll be a lot of destruction, there'll be a lot of devastation. So 1.5 is an absolute imperative. It is no longer below two degrees. We will try for 1.5. It must be 1.5 before our time runs out. So I think that's very important. The other important point is, of course, not just the 100 billion every year, but how you split it between adaptation and mitigation. If you look at the balance now, it is 80% mitigation and 20% adaptation. Whereas Paris was actually talking about an equal split between the two. Uh, it is also going to be about loss and damage. It is going to be about vulnerable communities. And I hope our prime minister is going to articulate that. But I think the most important message that we also want to give from the people's voice and from the people's forum is that we have to act. We have to act one collectively. It cannot be a single action by a single country. We have to act resolutely and we have to act urgently on the basis of science. I think this is the message that we really want to send. How we do it, how it is packaged, these are things that can be discussed. I think the other important thing, because I speak in, uh, in true South Asian candor, if I may say so, is that we will be asking the world for certain standards. We will be asking them to be respectful towards their obligations. We as individual countries, as individual governments, also have our obligation. It is not just demanding $100 billion. It is also making sure that money is well spent within our own countries. It is also making sure that we have the capacities, we have the capabilities, we have the MRV, you know, the measurable, reportable, verifiable, we have the transparency so that the people who really need the funds actually get the funds. Uh, we cannot be talking about polluter pays principle and seeing our own countries polluted and not doing anything about it. So I think when we ask something of other nations, we are actually setting the standard by which we will also have to uh, stand by, by which we will also have to be judged. So I think this uh, people's uh, forum is very important because at the end of the day, this is really the forum that is going to hold governments to account and make sure that they deliver on their pledges and the commitments. Uh, Vidya, if you don't stop me, I'm going to go on and on, uh, which I don't really uh, want to. Uh, but I really hope that uh, you know the messages get through. I hope uh, this uh, this solidarity and this coalition, this platform that uh, Mehdi and the rest have put together, isn't just going to be triggered to meet when uh, the president of America calls a summit. Uh, this should be a regular meeting. Uh, we should look at South Asia collectively. We should discuss about whether we can take common positions in COP26 as South Asia. Uh, we should talk about what we can do uh, for the environment as a whole, because the environment, and as we know, nature is not bounded by national boundaries. And uh, we have a common history uh, and hopefully uh, a prosperous future together. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Mr. Uh, Honorable MP Sabir Hussain Chaudhary, really what you last said is also what we are trying to put together, uh, a definitive South Asian perspective and voice uh, that will also, of course, uh, represent um, uh, South Asia communities at various uh, forums like the COP, etc. cetera. Uh, we're glad that you also think so and we, we we constantly engage with each other and we welcome uh, your leadership in this. Uh, thank you so much. We are also looking at you communicating um, our concerns and our pushes, our, our just demands, um, because you are the Parliamentary Standing Committee Chair on the, the Environment uh, Ministry. Also, more importantly, you're the Honorary President of the Interparliamentary Union, which is much, much larger. So we think that you would be an effective vehicle to communicate our demands even um, on the uh, to the Leaders Summit in a couple of days, and also, of course, larger stage. America is back, as you said, um, uh, and, um, and they uh, think that they are now wielding moral leadership, but we want them uh, to really uh, show climate leadership. Thank you. Uh, if there are any quick questions um, uh, for the Honorable MP before he may have to leave, uh, you can type it in the chat. Meanwhile, I'll also co call upon some of my colleagues from the five um, countries that have come together like this. I'll call upon first Ravi, who is um, 
the person who heads Mines, Minerals and People and uh, Samatha in India. Ravi? Meanwhile, any questions for, um, uh, for Sabir Hussain Chaudhary, Honorable MP, are welcome. Shall I go? Oh, wait. Yes, Rabi, you can hear. Yes, I can. I can. So, well, I just have a simple, simple point to President Biden and the world leaders who are meeting the after tomorrow. And it's the old saying in English, which says, uh, what you can do tomorrow, do it today. So I guess it is time to go by the old saying in this climate change issue. And so what they're trying to postpone is not right. So they should do it today. That's my... No, I think absolutely, you know, so when I said we have to act with urgency, it's not an agenda for tomorrow or the day after. Uh, we have to act, not even today, we have to act at this very moment. Because the clock is ticking, as you say, and the clock is not going to stop. And uh, we really, unless we, we act uh, today and now, I think we will not only have failed uh, ourselves, we will also have failed future generations. So it is vitally important that that urgency is there. And I'm sure in the uh, speech of our Honorable Prime Minister, this will be reflected. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Vidya. Vidya, maybe any problem? Vidya? Ah. So I'm I sorry, I, I got cut. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I'm so sorry. Yes. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, right away. I'm sorry, I... I missed out a bit. I think Manohar oh. Mustafa has a question for you, sir. Uh, as a leader of the Climate Vulnerable Forum, uh, is our Prime Minister, that is the Bangladeshi Prime Minister, going to propose something new that could perhaps surprise the <laughs> summit, he asks? Um, Vidya, I've learned a long time back that uh, never try to, uh, to preempt what Honorable Prime Minister is going to say. Um, so I think I leave that to her judgment and, and wisdom. But obviously, you know, it's not an easy task because she's representing a country as well as 48 other countries uh, with a population of 1.2 billion. Uh, so I think what is important is that uh, the U.S., and I think this is also another positive, you know, if you look at the Climate Vulnerable Forum, uh, it actually doesn't have a, a status when it comes to negotiations. Uh, if you look at the, the overall uh, climate uh, negotiations that go on during the conference of parties, uh, CVF is not recognized as one of the groups. Um, but the fact that CVF has been recognized for this summit, I think is, is interesting because it just shows that you know, America is also trying to be more inclusive in trying to listen to all of the voices. Normally, uh, we, along with other South Asian countries, including India, we would be under uh, G77 and China. And of course, within that, there are other dynamics. You know, there is China, there is uh, India, there is South Africa, there is Brazil, the BRICS countries, uh, which is why I was actually talking about uh, South Asian solidarity in terms of negotiation positions. Um, but uh, I think it's, it's a start. I think it's positive that CBF has been recognized. And, uh, but at the end of the day, all the countries should be part of CBF because all the countries are vulnerable. Even the U.S. should be a member of CBF because uh, climate change is not going to let anyone go. Um, if, you, if you look at a typical picture of a river in Bangladesh, you will have many fishing boats or other boats. Uh, so it's not a question of uh, which boat has actually gone down because uh, one boat going down or one boat uh, drowning means that all the other boats will meet the same way. So I think uh, we are all vulnerable from that point of view. And I think America should embrace that solidarity even more in the future. Thank you, uh, sir. There's uh, another um, uh, sort of, uh, I think, uh, Sohanur Rahman from Bangladesh again. Um, 
he wants to urge you, sir, uh, and uh, asks you to speak about the Green New Deal for Bangladesh. Um, uh, have, uh, what kind of support will the U.S. provide for just transition in your country? Also, Sekender, did uh, South Asians do any homework for preparing the common proposal from South Asian countries? Um, that we get. And, um, and uh, there is the flagging of natural calamities due to climate change. As you said, sir, um, uh, it's a great leveler, uh, cli the climate crisis, and yet, of course, it's felt more keenly by some. Let me just take the answer on Bangladesh. You know, I have, in fact, from our committee, we have advocated for 100% renewable by 2050, which is also the position of the CBF. And I think we have to do certain things. One is I think we have to look at maybe a maximum period of nine years to uh, stop all uh, fossil fuel subsidies in Bangladesh. You know, we are actually giving out almost a billion dollars a year. Uh, we are giving to the power plants for idle capacity that they never use. So it comes out to almost a billion. So I think the first thing we need to do, because our prime minister will also hopefully talk about uh, decarbonizing our economies, you know, the low carbon uh, model. And that's also in the parliamentary resolution that we took on a planetary emergency. So the su uh, subsidies have to go. I think we can look at 30% renewables by 2030. And there is tremendous potential, not just in solar, because we are also looking at floating solar technology. Uh, Bangladesh is a land of rivers and waters. So what can we do, you know, in terms of having floating cells, as it were, uh, we have uh, offshore wind, which I think is, has a tremendous potential. We are actually looking at that very closely. There are also tidal and other opportunities. Also, the whole issue of storing of renewable energy. Uh, so um, I don't want to be you know, breaking news, but uh, hopefully as and when we have the Mujib Climate Prosperity Plan uh, declared, uh, there will actually be a roadmap. So the important thing is we must first know what our plans are. Then on the basis of that, we can reach out and seek assistance. And when Mr. Kerry was in Dhaka and I had the privilege of, of meeting him over a working lunch, I actually talked about that, look, you are investing $2 trillion in your infrastructure. And that uh, involves a massive amount of R&D. Uh, there'll be a massive innovation. So how can countries like Bangladesh and others in South Asia and CBF countries, how can we access that innovation? How can we get that technology at the right price? Because that again goes back to the win-win construct. Yes, US companies have invested in fossil fuel, but they're also pioneers when it comes to clean technology. And Biden is actually talking about a clean technology revolution. He actually calls it a revolution. So I think it is in the common interest of all South Asian countries to see how we can access that technology. And that technology coupled with finance, that's how you get the win-win. And I think that's what we have to look for. That would be multilateralism going back to, you know, it's not a one-way charity. It is how we can all come together and find the goals and aspirations that are common. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think, um, Jaraf Hameem, uh, your question has actually been answered by Sabir, sir. Uh, because you asked whether uh, while we are proposing to the big economies um, to and urging them really to end fossil fuels, are we doing our job to end fossil fuel projects and transit to clean energy in our nations? I think at least for Bangladesh, we've got a clear answer, uh, which uh, is very good. I think in all our countries, we need to push much harder. The pandemic has meant that in some of our countries, at least in mine, uh, it's seen as open license to see that more coal mining can happen, etc. And now I call upon um, our With, friend I, from Pakistan. I, uh, yes. I take leave, yes. uh, if I may, because I'll be attending. An yes. hour. Thank you so much. And my apologies for not having heard everyone. But I hope I'll get from Hassan Mehdi later a brief on what the other points were. Thank you. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Absolutely. We will task him uh, to talk to you today on behalf of all of us. Thank you Thank so you. much. It's always a pleasure. And okay. please keep that progressive outlook always. We need you there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye now. Yes. yes. Bye. Sai Mazia from uh, Pakistan Kisan Rabita Committee. I call upon you to please share your thoughts.
Saima. Saima, where are you? Ah, there you are. Uh, you'll have to unmute yourself, Saima. And I'll ask, yeah. yes, you're unmuted. Uh, yeah. and so I, was, I, was, um, I was trying to unmute myself, but the hosts, they are... There, we can <laughs> see you and hear you. So go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, that's um, actually a little bit quick, critical time for me after having some eating something and listening to a lot of things like, uh, yes, um, um, uh, I heard uh, my friends from all the South Asian countries like India, Sri Lanka, Nepal and Bangladesh. And uh, that's uh, the thing that most of the points have been already uh, uh, been explained and uh, what we want from this, uh, from this new American president, what we are expecting and uh, that have been already elaborated. Um, that thing is like, uh, uh, what my point is like, uh, uh, we discuss it like we need uh, immediate actions. We don't want it to be um, uh, like, because this climate change is not only affecting our environment and all these things, but it also affecting the livelihood, basic livelihood of the people, especially when we see the farmers, when we talk about the workers and laborers, this thing is affecting uh, like um, uh, um, affecting the most uh, um, the vulnerable uh, uh, people of the society because these workers and small scale farmers they are the old, they are already on the hit of uh, you know the government policies the uh, feudalism, the industrialization, the, everything is going to hit them. And then everything is there and they are not like doing anything <laughs> to affect the climate. They are the one who are trying to save it, who are trying to, uh, uh, who, because they, they, they cannot do, they don't have the resources to, to destroy your climate, to destroy your uh, uh, environment, but they, they, are, they are affecting. And especially in South Asia, uh, when we see, uh, because almost in all the countries, the situation is almost the same. Uh, and uh, we, uh, we, we are not the, obviously the contributors, but the effect is. So I think we need to um, uh, talk about the things which we can do, and not only we are expecting from, from this conference, but we, we should uh, collectively in South Asia, what we can do collectively here, because if only, if only we are uh, relying on the, on the on the developing countries and what they will do and that what actions we can do and what we can do at collectively at South Asia level, we should also sort it out like this. Thank you, Vidya. It's over. Thank you, Saima. Thank you so much. Uh, Saima is a formidable uh, grassroots leader. Um, Farha Shah is asking what is the next step to be taken. Uh, meanwhile, we will consolidate thoughts from everyone. I ask Arati Paudel from the Gobikas Institute, Nepal, to please share her thoughts uh, in about a minute or so. Arati? Yes, Aarti, we can hear you now. Uh, yeah. uh, hi, I'm Aarti Fordil uh, from the Govikas Institute, Nepal. Uh, thank you for giving me... Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to show my solidarity. Uh, South Asian solidarity, I must say. Um, while we are thanking President Biden for taking the decision to rejoin uh, USA, uh, to the Paris Agreement and also calling Leaders Summit on Climate, we also need to strongly urge few things, uh, mainly related to fossil finance and clean energy. Uh, uh, first, uh, the US financial institutions must stop fossil fuel finance. Four US banks, uh, JP Morgan, Chase, Wells Fargo, Citibank, and Bank of America are the world's four biggest uh, lenders and underwriters to the fossil fuel industry. 
since the Paris Agreement. These US financial institutions are essentially undermining President Biden's pledge to the Paris Agreement and leadership towards a decarbonized society. If we are to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees, the US must end fossil finance. Uh, the next is a US should lead fossil fuel divestment movement. Over a thousand institutions globally worth almost 8 trillion USD have committed to divest from world's biggest oil, coal, and uh, gas companies. Unfortunately, US investors and technology suppliers fall short on the global commitment list and are still continuing its business, helping to expand fossil fuel-based power projects uh, globally, including Bangladesh. We expect to see they, are with, uh, they withdraw themselves uh, star, um, and this, for, um, uh, this uh, leader summit uh, can be a good platform for them to announce this. Uh, also, the U.S. should take a leadership role for a global transition to a new clean energy economy. Uh, the U.S. is home to one of the largest and fastest growing renewable energy markets with advanced technology innovations, creating uh, job opportunities and um, boosting economic growth. We urge the U.S. financiers and tech uh, giants to get involved with renewable opportunities in Bangladesh and other countries to serve the mutual interest of both um, all countries to build a decarbonized uh, society. I hope the invited 40 global leaders, especially from South Asia, will strongly put the voices together in the forum. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Arati. We also um, have the same hope um, and therefore this attempt which we know uh, we will see that the Biden administration gets all your thoughts and concerns. I now call upon Sanur Man Sohan uh, from YouthNet for Climate Justice Bangladesh. Okay. Please share. Yes. Thank you, Lydia. And uh, from YouthNet for Climate Justice and Fridays for Future Movement, we express uh, solidarity uh, with the South Asian collective and, and CSO groups. So mainly, uh, we welcome Biden uh, for the hosting this uh, conference or summit. It's uh, called Leader Summit and inviting our Prime Minister CBF presidency. But we want real uh, role, real leadership. So they want leadership, but we young people are urging them for real leadership because it's, uh, it's not showcasing. It's not show up time. It's no. It's needed real action because we are in the mass crisis. Because in our coastal communities, they are in suffering. They are dying, and totally said it's, uh, it's uh, has undone to our communities because our sweet water rivers turns to huge uh, salinity intensity. So, yeah, so you uh, think uh, how our fisher communities or our local communities will survive without this drinking water or fresh uh, uh, sweet water. So, uh, and the global community, they are telling us for, for adaptation. So adaptation has limitation without to cutting emission. So our urge to the uh, global uh, leaders for re-election without empty promise. So in COP, to, uh, COP and global platform as a leader, they are delivering a big word. I, I called it fakawas, fakabuli. So we want real action to cutting emission and finance, uh, promised finance uh, in, into adaptation and mitigation to create resilience building. And it's, uh, financing is not enough without proper access because the most communities are not getting access or getting support without lack of integrity, lack of transparency, uh, you know. So, uh, so uh, we ask for the global community for real uh, support to the survivors. So I was asked to the John Kerry. John Kerry was bringing her granddaughter in the COP21 Paris as a symbol of the protecting our, our uh, generation. So US, every fossil fuel uh, uh, center or uh, uh, coal-based power plant is uh, harming our 
So my last message to the global leaders from uh, Rabindranath Tagore that my that, that is why I need to ask of you today with tears. Have you for, forgiven them? Oh Lord, those that make a polluting the air, do you love them too? Those that have darkened the world. Je tumar dushi chhe bayu nibhaye chhe tobo halu. Tumi kita ke kore jo khama tumi ki beche jo halu. So we that this is no longer the time to uh, make empty promises, no longer the time for empty words. We need to see action clearly and that there can be no false solutions. It has to be uh, things that make sense and avert the climate catastrophe that is upon us. Uh, I call upon a friend from Sri Lanka before we close. Um, do we have someone from Sri Lanka? Or um, I will call upon uh, Himanta Vipanage again as uh, to consolidate the voices from South Asia. Himanta? Thanks, Vidya. Uh, it was great yes, listening, to, listening to many, many uh, speakers from the ground. And uh, so they are presenting uh, local communities, indigenous people, the mining communities, and all over. Uh, I think the voice is very clear. Um, so everybody um, is suffering from this climate crisis. And we are not the one responsible, but the responsible ones are going to to uh, I mean, so they, they are the one uh, all these developed countries and these developed countries have not done their duty in the in the past couple of years and um, we have come to a situation that unless we uh, do we make some solutions within the next couple of years that world will uh, lead to a real catastrophic and many of the people will become climate refugees so i think the money can do some that's what i heard from many of the speakers but not everything so there your political commitment is very very important it the political commitment not only comes from the developed countries but also the developing countries need to commit uh, for better um, better world better future with all these i mean we can talk about climate um, adaptation mitigation um, and then uh, uh, loss and damage and all these uh, bulky words uh, with a lot of heavy grounds but at the at the same time the local rural poor people not only rural poor people but even the urban poor people are suffering from this climate catastrophe so i think there's an urgency i think if you understand the urgency, definitely you will do something. But, but I think this is the time that you should not support the big businesses who, are, who have been always doing dirty work um, in, around the climate. And I, we, have, we have attended, many of us have attended the various climate negotiations that most of the time these negotiators, uh, the, the, the developing country negotiators are, are in, a, in a really bad situation because sometimes uh, the rich countries come and do all these um, hanky-panky between the countries and they somehow they put certain things into the paper but which is not helping actually the rural poor and the climate vulnerable so i think this message is very clear so i i thank all of you uh, for organizing this event and all the speakers um, and also especially Hassan Mehdi and Vidya Dinkar for putting this together. And, and thank you so much. I think this, this particular event gives a very good message. I hope the, the South Asian leaders as well as all the leaders um, and, and Biden, Biden government will learn a lot from this um, ground situation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Himanta. It's your sage counsel that all of us need in this push that we are trying as South Asia people to Biden. Uh, a final wrap and thank you coming from Ryan Hassan, who is executive director of the NGO Forum on ADB. Ryan, where are you? You actually get the last word. 
Yeah, and I'm not going to drag it on. I thought it was an absolutely wonderful uh, session. I learned a lot. And uh, the Honorable um, uh, Member of Parliament, Sabar Hassan Choudhury, gave a lot of uh, promising views on the way forward in the future. And I think for the region, um, this, this kind of an event where we collectively bring our voices together and uh, make sure that true just transition is happening is uh, needed. I'm sure this is going to be the one of many, many uh, conferences moving forward. The call to desubsidize the fossil fuel industry, the call to end coal immediately, uh, the call to really look at transparent just transition I, I think these are these are all core issues which we all work on and and I hope that all of you have the strength and the passion moving forward. Uh, thanks everyone. Have a great day. Thanks Ryan. Yes, we have uh, the strength and the bandwidth and let's keep together. Thank you all. Um, we will convey all your messages to the Biden administration before they actually sit with leadership from South Asia and across the world on this, our, uh, very, uh, on something that is so important uh, for our collective future. Um, thank you so much for being there and please continue to be there. It's a long fight, as Ryan said. Um, it's a struggle that needs us to stay together. Thank you.